and we are back with another debriefing now hit that subscribe button like share hit the notification bell if you appreciate this channel as that is what is going to keep it sustainable for you and for us we've got outstanding guests lined up so be notified smack the bell okay let's get to it now this begins with a little known mysterious business sized jet the bombardier challenger 650 which began to be noticed over ukraine as putin began amassing his military to invade that plane was identified as artemis what is artemis artemis stands for the airborne reconnaissance and targeting multi-mission intelligence system it is the u.s army's first ever manned aerial intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance jet that was designed to provide high altitude sensing capabilities against near-peer adversaries and to bridge identified gaps in the army's multi-domain operations mission that was according to the Army's Program Executive Office in August 2020. Multi-domain operations are operations that combine air and ground forces, or sea, air, and space forces, working in different domains. The Army's main multi-domain missions are missile defense and long-range fires. The Experimental Artemis Program is a joint investment between the U.S. Army and its Artemis industry partners. In 2019, prior to the invasion, Lidos, the primary Artemis contractor, completed aircraft and sensor system engineering, airworthiness qualification, information assurance accreditation, and integration and testing requirements. Lidos integrated the Challenger 650 jet with multiple eavesdropping sensors, while L3 Communications Integrated Systems and Raytheon Intelligence in Space provided prototype sensors for the program. The Army is looking to replace its prop-driven Beechcraft RC-12 Guardrail Intelligence Collection Platform with Artemis. Guardrail Intelligence Aircraft also flew missions over Ukraine prior to the invasion and has continued to do so from inside Poland and Romania. Artemis aircraft were first deployed with the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, where they were tested during operations there before being dispatched last year to the U.S. European Command, where they took part in experimental Demonstration Gateway Exercise 21, or EDGE. Altogether, Artemis flew more than 569 mission hours and had a readiness rate of more than 90%. Artemis returned to the U.S. last fall to participate for 60 days in the U.S. Army's Project Convergence testing in November at Yuma Proving Grounds in Arizona in what has been described as a campaign of learning. It was from there that Artemis was sent back to the European Command, now known as Artemis 2.0. Ironically, at the time, the U.S. Army said it expected Artemis would be ready for full-scale operations in March this month. The Artemis program began in September 2019 because of an urgent needs requirement for the aircraft's capabilities from the Office of the Secretary of Defense. Of note, a few months later, in December, the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisitions, Logistics, and Technology received the final report on another intelligence-related program with the Artemis acronym. This one called the Army Terrestrial Environmental Modeling and Intelligence System. That Artemis program was described as a research endeavor that was focused on developing innovative methods of fusing weather data from authoritative sources with geospatial content and services to fill a variety of identified Army capability gaps. It's unclear whether research from that program is related to the Artemis Intel program involving the Challenger 650A jet. A link to the report is in the description below. What is interesting, though, is that the year before, in 2018, Bombardier introduced its military version of its Challenger 600 series aircraft that were configured to be able to house the specific types of sensors and workstations that were installed on two of those planes as part of the Artemis program. The prime contractor, Lidos, handled the integration on the two Challenger 650s, which it had purchased from Bombardier for those purposes. Artemis 2.0 was pulled from the Army Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance Task Force Project Convergence Exercise in Arizona in November to be sent to the U.S. European Command to aid in gathering intelligence on Russia's military buildup inside Russia and Belarus along Ukraine's border. It was about that time that not just one, but several Artemis Bombardier Challenger 650s began to be documented clearly flying intelligence collection related sorties over Ukraine and after the invasion along Ukraine's western flank inside Poland and Romania. 
Project Convergence is the Army's version of the De Defense Department's joint all-domain command and control construct for a services-wide integrated seamless network of sensors and shooters, all working in tandem at computational speed. Artemis was one of about 100 technologies that the Army tested during the Project Convergence experimentation in Arizona in November. Task Force Service official Andrew Evans explained at the time that Project Convergence is a campaign of learning for the Army to help define what it needs in the future and what's the right system, what's the right payload configuration, and how do we work in this in terms of the joint fight. Artemis is viewed by some as eventually replacing the Army's propeller-powered Beechcraft RC-12 guard rail. As a jet, Artemis can fly faster and higher at standoff distances than can the propeller-driven guard rail. Evans was quoted saying, Artemis is more than an idea. It's a real-world combat system. And while we don't have the central configuration nailed down completely right now, we're getting close. What Artemis learned during the time it's on station, monitoring the Russian war machine in Ukraine, will undoubtedly provide the Army and the Pentagon with the real-world data that's needed to decide whether Artemis becomes a full-fledged member of the Services Intelligence Collection portfolio. The Army said in August 2020 that it intended to field 10 Artemis aircraft beginning in 2028. Artemis carries out its mission using the High Accuracy Detection and Exploitation System, or Hades, a new sensor suite that's been in development as part of the Army's Multi-Domain Sensing System, or MDSS, which is intended to address the Army's deep sensing requirement by providing platform agnostic sensors that support multi-domain operations including large-scale ground combat operations and to fill sensing gaps for indicators and warnings, long-range precision fire targeting, and situational understanding. Based on the details that have been disclosed by the Army, Hades is part of the overarching Army MDSS system of systems and will provide multiple sensing capabilities by developing and integrating sensor capabilities on different platforms that, as a system, will comprise a survivable sensing suite in multi-domain operations. These will allow for standoff operations to detect, locate, identify, and track critical targets for ground commanders. Presently, central priorities for Hades are focused on electronic intelligence, ELINT, communications intelligence, comment, and radio-assisted detection and ranging, radar. The Army envisions Hades combining electronic and communication intelligence receivers as well as ground scanning radar to detect and pinpoint enemy emissions and targets from significant distance. While the scope of the missions the Artemis aircraft are currently flying is unclear, they most certainly are providing valuable data within the context of evaluating the proof of concept of this technology. Remember, we need you as a subscriber. Put a digit on the subscribe button. Don't forget to like and share. We've got great shows lined up. Until next time.